Now, as we transition now into the message part, this is what I'm really excited about today as well. Clayton King Ministries. Man, Clayton, oh my gosh. He's one of my best friends in the ministry. Clayton King Ministry started in 1996. Clayton is an amazing evangelist, preacher, communicator of the gospel. They have seen over a quarter million people, over a quarter million people have given their life to Jesus through their ministry. Is that not insane? Quarter million people that they know of. Now, there's probably hundreds of thousands of people they don't know that God has really used them to impact their life. You know, back in 2002, Clayton and I met. He came and he spoke somewhere and we, we, we kicked it off and we became great friends and we've stayed in contact with each other ever since 2002. I've seen God's hand upon him. I never forget one time I called him. I told him, I said, man, listen, I think that you could be the next Billy Graham man because God is using you greatly. And I, I've been praying that God would use him to really bring revival all over the world because God's hand is on him and his ministry. In fact, he has a brand new book called Reborn. I've got it right here, fresh copy in my hand. Just came out this week. He's written 20 books and he said, you know what? He said, Daniel, if I could just have write one book in my entire life, this is the one I've been waiting for. If I never write another book again, this is my favorite one. And I've begun to read it and oh my goodness, it is so good. I mean, there is so much good preaching stuff in here. I'm telling you, I'm gonna be preaching some of this. I mean, it is so, so good. It just came out on Amazon. He didn't ask me to share this. He's just one of my great friends. And I'm telling you, he's, God is using him greatly. Now I wanna encourage you, if you have time to read, you can get on Kindle if you want one. This is great, pick it up, it's called Reborn. Maybe we can get Clayton back here at the end of the year because I know he spoke here before at Better Life Church. If, it's, if everything works out, we have no idea, honestly, what's going on. But let me tell you something, Better Life Church. Since day one we launched our church, we have been supporting Crossroads Ministry, Clayton King's ministry. We have been part of that. And because of your generosity, hundreds of thousands of people are hearing the gospel. That's right, because of you. And every time someone gets saved, when Clayton preaches somewhere or he's at a conference or at a church, he texts me and says, I was let you know that so many people got saved. And the reason why I want him to let me know is because of your generosity, sowing into his ministry. Listen, Better Life Church, you play a part of that. You play a role in seeing people come to faith in Christ because of your generosity of giving through the church. Remember that? You don't give to the church, but giving through the church, supported ministries like Clayton King Ministry. And so we were thinking, think, you know, you know I th we thought we might be back in church on Mother's Day. We had no idea what was going to happen on Mother's Day. And as we sat around, we thought, oh, what would be something unique? So I, I called up uh, Clayton. I said, hey, man, crazy question. I said, do you think your wife would like to speak into our moms? Like, I know she's an author, she travels the world, she speaks at conferences. Do you think that she can prepare a, a, a talk, a message or something to speak right to our mom's heart and her life? And he texted me back, he said, are you kidding me? Absolutely, Shari would love to speak to the moms at Better Life Church. And I am so thankful that she took time to record a message. This is awesome, guys. I'm telling you, right in her living room to speak to us today. Moms, this message is for you. Now, I know what some of you are thinking right now. Well, I'm a teenager. Uh, or I'm, I'm a husband and you know, I'm sitting here, you know, what's in it for me? It's not about you today, it's all about moms. And moms, this is the message for you. Now I will tell you, I like for everyone to listen because some things that moms want to say, I'm not a mom, I mean, I'm a dad of four. I, I, my wife, she's a mom, you know, I have a mom, uh, but I'm not a mom. And just speaking of that, shout out, happy Mother's Day, love you mom, I, I know you're watching, love you, love you, love you. Uh, but I, I don't know exactly everything that a mom goes through, so what better to speak to moms than a mom? And so here's, here's a mom who, who, again, travels the world, she's an author, and she's got a great, great story. I, I'm telling you what, she's gonna share with you how, what mom and Moses has in common. And I'm telling you, mom, sit back, enjoy this, but receive it. Some of you moms, listen, this is gonna really spark a chord with you. You're, you're gonna sit there and go, that's my story, that's me, and the people around you don't know that. Your kids don't know that, your husband don't know that, you don't even know maybe how to communicate that or share that with the friends around you and, and, and do life in a community together. But I'm so thankful that Shari has taken the time to speak this word into your life. So moms, this is for you. Sit back, receive the word of God as Shari speaks into your life. Thank you so much, Pastor, for introducing me today. I'm so excited to be with your church and to be bringing the message today. But because it's Mother's Day, I thought we should stop for just a second so you guys can meet my family. So my husband and my two kids are gonna come out. Come on, guys. <laughs> well, and my dog. <laughs> so um, this is my husband, Clayton. Hello. This is Joseph. Hey. This is our dog, Theo. <laughs> and this is my other son, Jacob. 
And I just wanted you guys to kind of see them so that as we're talking today, I feel like a mom and I feel like a person while you're there in your home. <laughs> you are <laughs> so, a person. <laughs> yes. Welcome to my family and to my home. Hey, Ma sorry. Happy Mother's Day. We haven't Thank told you, you that yet. Seriously. Happy Mother's happy Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank mom you. And, and you're the best mom ever. It's true. And He's just, speaking... He's speaking facts. Why is she the best mom ever, Jacob? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I mean, why not? She does everything for us. She taught us forever. She was a great encourager. She cooks for us. You do everything, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jojo, why is she the best mom ever? Same thing as him. Um, she's always there for us. And she, her love for us, she's never like, I, I never see the end of it. So, Aww. yeah. yeah. Mm. She's such a great role model. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. You're the best. Thank you for being the best wife, too. I mean, every day's wife day in our family. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Not for me. Well, no, I mean, they're <laughs> not married. <laughs> All right. Well, it was so good. Thanks, you guys, for coming in here and saying hi. Um, I hope you guys appreciated that. But if y'all want to get out, we're going to get on with the message. Happy Mother's <laughs> Day. I know that this is a different Mother's Day for all of us. It's a Mother's Day to go down in history where we're all at home with our families and that might feel a little bit different. I know when I was a little girl, I remember getting up and getting to go to church with my mom and my grandma. My grandma usually had a little flower pinned on her dress and my grandfather usually escorted her in. Um, me and my mom and my brother all went with my grandparents to church we had on our Sunday best, we were all taking pictures. And then afterwards we would go out to dinner. Restaurants were full. People were traveling from all over to celebrate their moms. But today is a little bit different and we're kind of all at home. And I'm sure we all don't know what to do right now. But I wanna let you know, that doesn't mean that we can't celebrate Mother's Day with our moms. So right now I'm get, sitting with my family and I'm celebrating with my two boys. My mom's far away, but I'm gonna send her something. I'm gonna send her a little reminder that I love her. I'm also gonna try to uh, ask Alexa to call my grandma. That's always a funny moment for me because my grandma is 97 years old and she loves Alexa, but she can't really hear me that much. So I'm gonna call her on Mother's Day and tell her thank you so much for being such a great grandma to me. She has a giant family. She always brags on all the 60 family members that we have. And so we can still celebrate from far away. And I'm excited about that. Some of you, maybe you're not used to being at home as a family all the time. And so this may be a difficult Mother's Day for you because all these feelings are kind of erupting inside you. Maybe you've been around your kids a little too much. You didn't expect to serve as a homeschool mom and then also work as well. And so maybe you kind of wish your kids um, could go somewhere else for a little while and then come back so that you could feel more happy about this Mother's Day. Or maybe you're a mom that didn't get to spend a lot of time with your kids before we were quarantined into our homes and you're savoring every moment right now. Maybe you're a grandma who's had to take your grandkids in and serve as a mom for a little while because your daughter is a single mom or maybe um, there's two working people in a family and they just have to keep working right now in order to survive. So we're all in different situations and I just want us to all come together and figure out how to celebrate this Mother's Day while we feel separated. So before we get on with the message, I want to invite you to do something with me. I wanna celebrate right now together. So if you're in a room with your mom right now, I want you to think about something great that you could encourage her with. Maybe you could tell her something encouraging um, about how hard she's working or how much you notice her. Or maybe there's a favorite memory that you have of the two of you guys together. I would love for you to just talk about that and take a minute to just encourage your mom. If you're at home and your mom is not at home with you and she is far away, Maybe just think about, do I have on my phone my favorite picture of me and my mom? And send that to her really fast and just maybe text her a little message that you appreciate and love her. Maybe your mom likes handwritten notes or your grandma does. And so you could just 
take out a piece of stationery later on and write her a letter, maybe send her a picture. I don't know what she would prefer, but we're gonna take just a minute right now to take time to encourage our moms and then we're gonna come back for the message. All right, so we're back. We're gonna go on in and we're gonna celebrate Mother's Day. So what I know as a mom right now is that this is one of the most challenging times for moms in our country. I actually went on my social media feed and I was asking moms what they needed right now. And most of them were like, I just need someone to tell me that I'm doing a good job. I feel like I'm going crazy at home. And so I'm gonna take a minute and tell you, you're doing a good job. This isn't gonna last forever. This is a certain season in our lives and it will pass too. But I wanna, I wanna pull in one of my favorite figures in the Bible. His name is Moses. And he was presented with a giant challenge that he never thought he would have. And that's why the title of this message is called Moms and Moses. We're gonna talk a little bit about how, what kind of commonalities Moses has with us as moms. And believe it or not, there are a lot, but we're gonna talk, talk about two specific ones. Now, let me give you a little bit history about Moses in case you don't know him. Moses was um, an orphan when he was younger. His mom saved his life from this massive killing that was going on in Egypt. She put him in a basket and he floated downstream. Well, Pharaoh's family found Moses and rescued him from death. They brought him in and raised him. Well, when he got older, he realized that he wasn't an actual Egyptian. He wasn't born into Pharaoh's family. He was actually a Jew. And so he was trying to figure out um, a little bit more about his people. And when he realized the slavery, like all of the conditions that they were in in slavery, he was a little bit devastated, as I'm sure you would be too if you saw your people being treated the way that he did. So what he did is he had this um, emotional reaction where he ended up killing one of the Egyptian slave owners who was mistreating an Israelite. And when he did, he was like the guy who everybody was chasing. He had committed a felony and Pharaoh was after him. 
So he ran to the desert. He ran away. He was scared and he had no one. But he found a family in the desert who took him in. Second time this has happened in his life. They loved him. He became a shepherd and he started living with them. And I bet right when he felt like his life was settled, God calls him to do this impossible task. He calls Moses. God speaks through a burning bush. And he says, Moses, my people are still in trouble. And I want you to be the one to go and rescue them. Now, I would be incredibly intimidated, first of all, to have God speaking to me through a bush, number one. But second of all, I would be even more intimidated to think that God would call me to rescue an entire nation from one of the most powerful nations on earth. So you've got this very normal man. All he He's a shepherd. He takes care of sheep all day. And God says to him, I want you to go rescue my children. Here's two things I know about Moses right now. He does not feel like he has the experience and he probably doesn't feel like he has the energy to do this kind of task. And so he and God have a little bit of a conversation where Moses tells God all of the reasons why he is not the guy for the job. Exodus 3, 7 through 14 says, Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people in Egypt, and I have heard them crying out because of their oppressors. I know about their suffering, and I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them from that land to a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the territory of the Canaanites, the Hethites, the Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. So because the Israelites' cry for help has come to me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them, therefore go. I am sending you to Pharaoh so that you may lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses asked God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He answered, I will certainly be with you. And this will be the sign to you that I'm the one who sent you. When you bring the people out of Egypt, you will all worship God at this mountain. Then Moses asked God, if I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they asked me, what is his name? What should I tell them? And God replied to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent you. I've always kind of wondered, what does that mean? I am. I am who I am. I am sent you. It seems like kind of a crazy thing to tell a guy who you're sending to go rescue people from a giant nation. God could be possibly sending Moses to his death. And Moses is thinking to himself, I'm returning to a land where I killed someone. I'm returning to a land where I'm supposed to rescue a giant horde of people. And I am only one person. And I have no authority for this. And I have no experience for this. And all God's giving me is I am? Like, is that even a name? So I think that for all of us, there are two things that we have in common with Moses. Number one, he didn't feel like he had the experience. And number two, he probably didn't feel like he had the energy. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit of a story about myself. One thing you probably don't know about me is that I majored in recreation management. So I was a rock climber. I was a caving instructor. I was a whitewater rafting guide. So you may not look at me and think that's my background or that those are things that I like, but four months after my husband and I got married, we had a chance to go to the Himalayas and do a backpacking expedition with medical supplies to unreached people groups. And I was super excited to do this, but I knew it would be hard. Well, let's fast forward just a bit. We're on the trip. We've been there for over a week. We've been hiking day in and day out, sleeping on the ground in tents. 
um, hiking up mountains as high as I've ever seen in my entire life. I get up one morning and I realize this is going to be the hardest day we've trekked the entire time. That day, we went to one peak that was 18,600 feet alone. It was the hardest day we had the entire trip. But I remember something that I had to do. As I was hiking up every mountain, when I was on the bottom, when I was in the valley looking up at the top of the mountain, I always told myself, there's no way I'm making it up this mountain. But I couldn't just wait there. It's not like a taxi was gonna come by or I could just take a bus. We were in the middle of nowhere. So I had no choice other than to just start hiking. Step by step, breath by breath, I was taking steps up this mountain to conquer my greatest fear and my greatest, like biggest obstacle in front of me. But every time I got up one of these mountains, I would look from the top down and just think to myself, how did I do that? And it wasn't one big, huge miracle that came my way. It wasn't like God provided an elevator for me to like step in on the bottom and I pushed a button and I made it to the top. No, I just had to walk step by step and every breath by breath, I was just taking another step closer to the top. Well, the last mountain we climbed that day, or I thought was gonna be the last mountain we climbed that day, we came to the bottom and there was this giant river. I was so ready to be done. It was dinner time. We'd been hiking all day. Our whole team thought this was the end for sure. So we took our boots off. We took our socks off. We put our blistered and bloody feet into the water. It felt so good. And I was like, we're done. Now all we need is our tents and a little bit of food and I'm going to bed. But the woman who led the trip walked straight past us and she said, I hope you don't get too comfortable because we have three more hours today. <laughs> I was like, I don't have three hours left inside me. And I had no more food left. My husband had two crackers, which he offered me. I was so tired. I was so dehydrated. I was so hungry that the next mountain we went up, I literally got altitude sickness and almost fell off the mountain. My husband tried to grab me to keep me from falling. And I thought he was trying to pull me off and kill me. And so I <laughs> threw his hands off and I said, what are you trying to do? Kill me? I had completely lost my mind. And I thought, there's no way I can make it to the end of this trail. So they put me on a donkey. They pretty much tied me on there so I wouldn't fall off. And all I know is I pretty much passed out. And the next day woke up at four in the evening thinking it was morning and thinking we were about to do a medical, like set up medical tents and have everyone there. I didn't think I was going to make it past that day. I have had many thoughts like that since I've been a mom. When I had my first child, the pregnancy was entirely difficult for me. I won't go into details, but all I remember is looking at my husband and saying, I don't ever want to do this again. And then when I had my first son, the labor was 23 hours long. And the first nine months, I was depressed and didn't know it. I had postpartum depression and had no clue. I beat myself up every day looking at all these other moms and thinking, why do they love this and why can they do this so easily? And I'm struggling every day just to feel like I'm a good mom and like I can do this right now. I had that first son and a few years later, I actually had another one. But after I had my second son, he had colic and acid reflux for nine months. I didn't sleep after I had him. And I was sick with him during my pregnancy the whole time. And this time I looked at my husband, I said, not again, please just don't let me do this again. And we only have two, but I love my two. Well, here's, th here's two things that I know I have in common with Moses. Number one, when I had my kids, I didn't feel like I had the experience to be able to be a good mom. And every day, I think I didn't ever believe I had the energy to be a good mom or to even accomplish this thing, this goal that God had set in front of me to raise a human. 
And not only just to raise a human being and keep them from being, keep them alive, but also to raise them in a way that I felt like that they would still love God. Look, that's one of my biggest challenges. We're a ministry family. You know, there's so many jokes about pastors' kids and missionary kids and how messed up they are and how they end up turning out to not love God at all. I had this big fear that I was going to mess my kids up, that just because we were in ministry, that that would automatically cause them not to want to have anything to do with God. And so I had so much fear in motherhood. What are your biggest fears right now? I know that maybe for you, staying home every day is the biggest challenge you've ever faced. I chose to homeschool my kids at one point, and it was the hardest thing I've ever done, but I did choose it. Many of you are home, and you didn't choose it, and you have a job, and you're just trying to make ends meet. And for that, I want to applaud you. I want to tell you that in this challenge that you are facing right now, I believe that God would say to you the same thing that he would say to Moses. He's going to say, I am. I am with you. What does that actually mean? Because it's just really two words, I am. Here's what I know. The Israelites didn't understand who God was. I don't think we truly understand who God is either. Even though we have the Bible, every day I'm learning new things about who God is. This is what I am means. It means that I am whatever you need and whatever moment that you are experiencing, I will be what you need in that moment. I have been there for you. I am currently here for you and I will always be there for you. So right now, do you need peace? God will be your peace. Do you need hope? God will be your hope. Do you need someone to tell you, you can do this just every day, morning by morning, just like I took one step and one breath to get up that mountain? Maybe you just need to wake up every morning and to just do every day and then go to sleep at night and say, I did my best, God. It's now all up to you. Look, here's the thing. Jesus didn't promise that we wouldn't struggle while we're here on earth. It's obvious right now that that's the truth. But he did promise that he would be with us. And he sent the Holy Spirit to be our counselor, our guide, and our comforter for every situation in which we believe that God is isn't there for us, he is. Any circumstance that comes our way, he is saying to you, I am. I haven't left you. I am present. I am listening. You can complain to me. You can worship. You can love me. You can be scared with me. I'm not intimidated by anything that you bring to me. I am here for you. So, Moms and Moses, that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about what we have in common with Moses. And I think the two biggest things are we may not feel like we have the experience to do what it is we've been given today, but God says, I am. And the second thing is we may not feel like we have the energy to do what we've been given to do today, but God will say to you, I am your peace. I am your rest. So moms, I hope this has been encouraging to you. This is a message I've been living out for a really long time. And so I just wanted to share with you my deepest heart for you. I hope that it encourages you. And I hope that you have an amazing Mother's Day. Thank you so much for inviting me into your homes to minister to you. I really appreciate being able to be part of this church gathering today. I hope you have a wonderful Mother's Day. And I'm so proud of you. Wow, what an incredible word. Such a timing message to moms. Moms, he is the great I am. He is your peace. He is your hope. He is your strength. He is your rock. He is your hiding place. He is your refuge. You run to him. And I love what Shari says. You just take this one step, one day at a time. Like sometimes it might just be moment by moment. I don't know how we're going to do it when we go back to school. I don't know how we're going to figure out when that happens. I don't know when that's going to take place. It's okay. You just take 
one step today, knowing that he is with you, he's for you, he's not against you, and he loves you. He loves you. So moms, I pray that you just receive that message. I pray you let it speak into your heart and into your lives. And I pray whoever's surrounding you today, mom, if you have your family with you, you may not have your family right now with you, um, whatever your situation may be. I just want you right now, if you know your mom, if your mom is still alive, and, and I know sometimes on Mother's Day when things like this happen, there's good emotion, bad emotion, negative emotion, sad emotions. And there's all different types of emotions. But wherever you find your place right now, here's what I want to encourage you. No matter who you are, He is the great I am. And that He is with you. And I just, I, just, I just hope that you just take a moment and you would just pray for your mom, that you would encourage your mom, that you would lift up your mom, and that you will love on your mom if they're able, even from a distance somehow, from a text, from a note, from an email, something to let them know how much you love them and how grateful you are for them. But maybe you're sitting there and you're watching this on an iPhone, an iPad, a computer, Apple TV, YouTube, doesn't matter. I don't know what you're on, what device. It's okay. But I want to encourage you, if you've never got to a point in your life where you've never surrendered your life to Jesus, you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus, moms, it doesn't matter, whoever you are watching today, you need to give your life to Jesus more than ever. You want him to be your peace, you need to give your life to him. You want him to be your rock and your foundation, you need to surrender your life to him. And the Bible says it like this, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That if you will confess with your mouth, like you really believe in your heart, therefore you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you believe that he is the son of God, the Bible says you will be saved. And you can do that right now. Whether you're watching this in the living room, listening to it on a podcast, driving down the road, whatever or wherever across the world you find yourself right now, you can give your life to Jesus. And all you need to do is bow your head and cry out to him. You don't even have to bow your head, really. You just cry out to him to say, Jesus, I believe. I believe you came for me. I believe you died for me. And I believe that you came back to life for me. And today, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of what I feel and fall short all the time. And right now, I want you to come into my life. And I want you to be the great I am. I want you to be my peace and my rock and my riches. I want you to be my salvation, my deliverer. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now help me follow you all the days of my life. Now we believe, you can look back up if you want to. We we believe that the text is true. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, like if you really truly believe in your heart and saying a prayer is not what saves you, but your lips can proclaim what your heart declares. And if your heart declares that Jesus Christ is Lord, then listen, let someone know right now in the post, right now in the comments, no matter, I don't know, you may not be watching a platform and you can put comments. That's okay. But if you can text, put a comment right now. So I just want to let you know, I gave my life to Jesus. Email me, pastor at betterlife.church. Email me right now. I'd love for you to do that. People have been emailing me on Sundays. It has once you know, pastor, I gave my life. I'm I'm, I'm taking the step forward following Jesus. So, hey, pray for me and my my family, what's going through. Maybe you're sitting there by yourself and you don't know what to do. Text. You got a phone. Grab your phone. Pull up your text messages. And I want you to type in the word life. I want you to type in the word. And I want you to text the word life to 606-268-9436. One more time, 606-268-9436. Text the word LIFE and we will send you some next steps. Like what is your next step? Text the word LIFE and we will send you some next steps. Or go to our website at betterlife.church slash next steps. We want to help you take your steps and following after Jesus. Now, it's not amazing. Now, did you not have a great day Now, was this not a very unique but fun experience? Everyone right from their living room, from from me, from hosting to worship, to the message, to the story, all the way right here. What a very unique day, but what an awesome day that I pray and hope that you would be encouraged in the Lord. Let me tell you something. As all you know through this, through the crisis and, and economy and everything that's happening in the world today, here's what I want you to know. Let me tell you something that's been amazing, and that is your faithfulness and your generosity. And because of your generosity, I'm telling you, we are changing a region. We're changing the world because of you. You hear said all the time, you don't give to the church, but you give through it to minister to the people around you. And I'm here to tell you, Better Life Church, man, I'm here to tell you, 
God is using you in an unreal, supernatural, listen, literally, supernatural way to minister to this community because of your generosity. I know a lot of you right now, you're already giving online. My wife and I, we give online. It's safe, it's secure. In fact, we believe you automate what's important. And it's important to us to make sure that we give our tithe and above that tithe, we give an offering every month, first of the month, here it is, Lord, we automate it because that's one of the easiest and secure and fastest way to that. And if that's you, if this message spoke to you, if the ministry of Better Life Church is speaking into your life, like this is a place that you come and God allows us and speak into your life, would you please pray about partnering with us? Partner with us as we continue to reach not only this region, but listen, literally the world. Right here from Moorhead, Kentucky. I'm not joking. The world. We are reaching the world right here from Moorhead, Kentucky. You go to betterlife.church slash give now. And if that's you and you want to participate, we'd love for you to do that. It'd be awesome. Um, but either way it goes, listen, thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us today. I am so excited to continue in the series, The Way of Jesus, right back here next Sunday. We're going to go right back where we picked off on what it looks like to follow after Jesus, to be a true disciple of Jesus. I'm telling you what, I can't wait. I'm so excited to be here to share with you the message that God's been putting on my heart. I love you guys. And I'm telling you what, God's using you, Better Life Church. Keep your head up. Keep your eyes on Jesus because I really believe this. I really mean this. The best is yet to come.